Hey everybody, this is YouTube, this is Go Time, and this is a live session, a blitz medley, if you will, for YouTube. This is not a bullet brawl, this is old man's chess, three minute chess. Here we have the Nimzo Indian, 4e3 with knight g2 variation. I'm going to take, retreat the bishop, shake and bake, and we'll see what line we end up getting. d5 is a move that it's considered to be sort of the challenging theory here, but other approaches, including I was going to say knight f4, are also totally possible. d5 is, is probably the move that equalizes in the most, how do you say, direct fashion. But b6, followed by the approach that I'm going to take with b6, is a sort of a hyper-modern way to approach the position. It is a hedgehog style. And he chooses to play bishop f3, and if we do end up making this trade, well, then we end up making that trade. We're not making that trade, apparently. But the disadvantage here is my development has been a little dysfunctional, that's true, but the hedgehog is very solid. White doesn't have a lot of inroads in this position, despite the space advantage. If black gets coordinated, he'd like to try to put pressure on the c file, the c4 pawn in particular over here, and... Maybe ask White exactly what he wants to do about that. So I'm going to go ahead and play the move queen to c7, which of course attacks the pawn immediately, but might even open up some doors for a move like d5, hitting the knight with a little little discovery action. I'm not exactly sure yet. We'll see what suits my fancy. But I've been getting some requests lately via Twitter to uh, maybe play some slower blitz medleys these days and not just all the bullet brawl like hey danny slow it down you're obnoxious okay right i get it all right stop yelling at me no i'm kidding no one actually said that but i think i have a little trick of ruski here a little discovered attack on the pony undefended pieces hanging pieces must be attacked your recognition of undefended pieces in your opponent's camp can never be underestimated i just sounded like a textbook it's true, though, not because there's always tactics, but the reason why we learn all these basic tactical patterns and awareness is so that it becomes sort of subconscious that when opportunities are available, or, or at least when the chance for, for them might, act, might even exist, whether they're even concretely available after you calculate or not is another issue. But you don't want to miss your opportunities. And if you're not tactically on top of things, you just might. So let's see, I guess I'm going to take here now with the pawn before saving my pony because one it opens up the queen I might even consider playing queen to d6 and by gaining a tempo on the bishop and fixing the structure I'm also sort of solidifying that this bishop over here is gonna be out of play for the rest of the day that's interesting maybe he wants to take on e8 in fact and then take on b7 not such a bad idea now is it no it's not it's not such a bad idea have to be a little careful here. I'm going to take with the queen. And if he takes on d7, I need to find a slightly creative solution. I see I would like to just play a move like queen takes h3. I've had my eye on, but he can play rook takes e8, rook takes e8, and then rook takes b7. And he has won his material back. He chooses to go this way and actually leave my pony, which I don't even know was the right decision. Feels better potentially for him to get the bishop, but... As soon as he goes for it, I think he actually realizes that maybe he agrees he's just totally lost here. So that was a, a three-minute blitz battle. We can go ahead and back up and take a quick look. Leave this slightly more educational live session today, live chess commentary playlist. If you like it, go ahead and check it out. Go subscribe, everybody. So this knight g2 line is sort of based on the principle that they want to capture back on c3 with the pony. Pretty clearly, they want to avoid double pawns like a classical in themselves. So here they have an option to take, but usually if I take on c3 and then target the c4 pawn, those lines are okay for black. But some of the challenging theory here exists after d5. And after takes, takes, I have a couple moves, but the most simple is a move like rook to e8, rather than bringing the bishop out to c5, which is sort of the old line, the old way they used to play it. Karpov used to play it that way. But white's considered to have an edge there. So black plays the slightly more flexible after takes, takes, rook e8. And if d6 is played, the bishop comes back to f8, and the pawn can be overextended in line. So learn that from my my old uncle, Uncle Jinji, as we'll call him, regular video author over there on chess.com. 
But here, so instead of playing d5, we get a hedgehog system. And, you know, this is sort of passive for black. And, and that's the point. When you look at it, it looks passive. Maybe he could have played knight to b5 here. If I play a6, does he have knight a7? Ooh, tricky business. But I have bishop b7 at the end of that line. I'm probably okay. Like, let's see, knight b5, a6, knight a7, bishop b7. He plays knight c6. I have to take. He takes. I play rook c8, skewering the bishop and the pawn. I think black's probably okay there. So he plays b4 instead, and now when I complete my development, we get this sort of typical hedgehog, and my opponent blunders tactically. If he's aware of the knight and plays the correct move, something like queen to d2, I don't think I can really get away with taking this pawn. Multiple forms of discovery might find the queen a little bit. The queen is going places where she shouldn't, and we all know what happens there, right? So he plays knight e4, though, and blunders the tactics, which I was happy to capitalize on, and before you know it, Bob's your uncle. Hi, right, everybody. Follow me on Twitter. Join chess.com. Stop wasting your life and go play chess on a gaming website. That's right. If you're watching videos, hiding hiding the videos from your boss in the cubicle that you're sitting in right now, or maybe even from your girlfriend who wants you to come hang out and you're choosing chess over her. Well, first of all, good for you. Second of all, go join chess.com. See you later.